So I'm just going to have a look across the screen and fill you in who everybody is. Ah, we have Caroline. Hello, Caroline. Caroline, wave. Caroline is um, joining us from Kenya, from Nairobi. She is a good friend of ours from Oxfam. And I've just spotted uh, the Pimers. Say wave, Pimers. These are <laughs> very good friends. My neighbours across the road are here. That's fabulous. Oh, and the Pearsons are here. Hello, Pearsons from Somerset. Lots of wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, lots of people from Oxford as well. Oh, and a very special welcome to Rachel Pearson. And Rachel is due to get married on 6th of June. So this is what I would have been wearing at your wedding. We're hoping it still goes ahead, Rachel, at some point. So, lovely. Everybody's here that I'm expecting, though I'm sure more people will join as we go on. So, I'm going to start by giving you a little um, presentation about the book. But first of all, I just want to say that this is very strange times. And I decided to do the book launch because normally book launches happen in a bookshop somewhere with a few people from the local area. And I thought this would be a fabulous opportunity to go large because everybody is stuck at home with nothing to do. So this is something you can add into what you are doing today. And for me, it's a bit like a massive this is your life because on the call, somewhere hidden in this group are two of my bridesmaids, um, two of my, um, our best men, we had two, uh, family and friends from all through my life. Um, friends from being at school in Essex. I'm a proud Essex girl. Wave if you're from Essex. Yeah. Um, friends from Poland. There's a particularly special that Graham and Joanna are here because we hosted their wedding reception when I was in the diplomatic service in uh, Warsaw. So it's lovely to reconnect with them. Um, lots and lots of friends, lovely friends from Oxford and from Oxfam days. Friends from college, how could I forget college? I've just spotted one of my friends has brought the royal family with her. Thank you, Claire. Um, and new friends as well from my life as an author. So thank you everybody for coming. So first of all, let's tell you a little bit about the book, why I have brought you all together. So um, the book is called The Summer of Wishful Thinking and it's published under my name, Eve Edwards. I'm a very confusing person. I, I have four different names. Um, one is Julia Golding. One is Joss Sterling. Another is Eve Edwards. And then some of you will know my real name. <laughs> so I always confuse people. But this is an Eve Edwards book because it's, I suppose a feel good romance, contemporary, um, having a bit of fun with some ideas. And the big theme of this book is weddings. There's the structural idea running through it because the main character is a registrar of births, deaths and marriages. So of course there are some births and deaths as well, but that's the main idea, it's from her perspective. So when I say wedding, what do you think of? Do you think of arriving in a carriage to the church, crowds cheering? Uh, do you think florists going bad and decorating everything within an inch of their life? Do you think of feeling like a princess for the day or prince? Don't they look gorgeous? And do you remember that bit where you had to sign the registry if you've got married? This is actually one of the pictures from our own wedding, which bizarrely turns out to be, normally the registry bit is, you know, but actually it's one of the nicest shots from our wedding. It looks like a Renaissance picture or something. So that's me trying to work out how to use an ink pen. But maybe you go a bit more wild on your wedding choices. Maybe you do the fairy tale one. These are all taken from the wonderful weddings that you can find online when you start Googling. 
maybe you like to do a bit of outward bound under underwater or up on zip wires like this couple maybe you want to dress up as your favorite characters here's a particularly wonderful superhero wedding um or a historic tudor one or the star wars one had to be there somewhere or the of course i mean get married with an elvis impersonator or two in this case i'm not sure who's marrying who in this picture and the book starts with an Elvis impersonator wedding. So I had to put that one in. Or my particular favourite, the Harry Potter wedding, um, where they're obviously gone really to town on learning magic for their special day, which puts learning a dance well into, you know, perspective, doesn't it? This is, people go large on their weddings. They they have all sorts of dreams about their weddings and the people who officiate for these kind of weddings tend to be registrars. But I had in mind when I started this book, the um, wonderful film Four Weddings and a Funeral, which came out at the time when I was going to lots of weddings. And some of the people on the call were those people whose weddings I went to. And I seem to remember a time in my life, just like the Hugh Grant character, where I was always late for something and trying to find a church somewhere I'd never been before. Um, so that film has a particular strong structure going through it, doesn't it, with the, uh, the four weddings giving it its backbone. So I, I was playing with those ideas and thinking about what would that be like now? And um, my sister, there she is, uh, She's come on me on, with me on other research trips. Uh, that's, this is when we did together to Venice a few years ago. She, her profession for many years was a registrar of births, deaths and marriages. And when we met up, she would often tell me of all the amazing weddings that she would preside over. And I must admit, I did not have to make up any of the weddings that I put in the book because she had already been there, done that, and married the people. Um, the other idea in my head was this, Ed Sheeran. I listened to a lot of Ed Sheeran, and his track, um, Castle on the Hill, is based on Framlingham Castle, and obviously a good backdrop for a wedding. But there's a particular line in that about um, thinking about all the people he used to know, and he talks about one who's just getting by. And I thought, who is that character living in Suffolk? What is she like? And that was where I came up with the idea for the summer of wishful thinking, with the main character being the registrar whose own life is falling apart. And so she is um, having to preside over weddings at that same time. And then also the castle in the background is actually in Essex, I think, uh, just over the border. It's Castle Headingham which is a wedding venue. And so the, main, uh, the other main character has taken on this enormous project to turn an old castle like that into a wedding venue. And then the two of them meet. I'm going to ask my sister um, to, to say a few words. Jane, I'm unmuting you. And over to you, Jane. Well, hello everyone. I am Jane, Julia's sister. I can see lots of familiar faces. I can also see lots of unfamiliar faces. So nice to meet you all. Um, I am, I've obviously grown up with Julia in Essex. I've moved around quite a lot. And my last occupation was a registrar in Suffolk. So I was a registrar of births, deaths and marriages for ooh, 14 years and I have many tales to tell and I'd often meet up with Julia um, and we'd have a cup of coffee or we'd go out for a walk and I would keep her amused with my stories because she is a sponge, she, she soaks up all the information that you give her so be very careful what you tell her she may well write you into one of her stories. <laughs> um, my job also involved registering births and deaths, so you never know, the next book that comes out <laughs> might well be based on another aspect of my interesting 
uh, career. We did actually tell uh, quite a few gruesome things about deaths. So there's some very there, gruesome things. There are lots of gruesome uh, stories, but not a, they're not a feel-good read. No, they're not a feel-good read. This book is superb. I recommend you all buy it um, and read it. It is amazing, as all of Julia's books are, but this is the best one yet. Thank Definitely. you, Jane. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And now, um, in the tradition of the wedding reception, uh, I'm now going to invite the best man, who is my uh, publisher, my editor, Kate. Kate, I'm just unmuting you. Uh, where are you? Come on, Kate. There we go. You are unmuted. So away you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. Um, so um, I had a bit of a think when um, Julia said, oh, you know, we're all going to have these little roles and I was going to be the best man. So I thought that the best thing to do uh, as a best man, I'm supposed to be drunk. So <laughs> good, good. I've tried to help with that today. I tried to help with that, so I've had a few, and I thought it would be um, it would be good to have a couple of crap jokes. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Jane for a magnificent speech. Thanks, Jane. I knew that you would be a tough act to follow, and I was right. I could hardly follow you at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, in the theme, another joke in the theme of a wedding. Um, I'd like to say if if Julia is perhaps are you meant to be the bride? I think I'm more like the bride's mother. Okay, well I'll no, say to the bride then. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say to the bride just how uh, I'd like to say to the groom actually. I'm going to say to the groom how lucky you are. You'll leave here today with a wife who's warm, loving, and caring, um, and uh, you, uh, she'll have gained a lovely dress and a wonderful bouquet of flowers. <laughs> all taken from the crap book of jokes for weddings so there we go crap jokes but um a fantastic book and um what i was when i was thinking about what i wanted to say um about the summer of wishful thinking um well one i think julia is really an incredible and inspiring author and person and um i have always been completely blown by blown away by her work ethic so julia has basically written I think five novels in the space of about it in the space of a year is that right is it five novels it's about that isn't it possibly more she doesn't only write um fantastic um heartwarming and compelling um romantic stories she's also writing a series of thrillers for us and still you know has um the wonderful um young adult strand you know which is still um very much part of her life and she's um she's doing all these other things as well and julia is a really really inspiring person um so i'd like to thank julia for um for inspiring me as an editor um and also for all of her hard work and her inspiration and it, i really really enjoyed working with her we haven't known each other for very long um, but I'm really happy to welcome her into our HarperCollins family. Um, and it's lovely to see some of the rest of the family here today, um, the other authors um, who um, um, we're all getting, who Julia's getting to know. And um, we're all part of, um, you know, a really close network of um, authors, editors and publishers who feel really passionate about what we do. So um, thanks to julia i'd also like to thank jane again um for giving julia the inspiration for a summer the summer of wishful thinking and um it really has been inspired because i think that you know when people think of romances i think they often think of things that are quite fluffy and quite um quite light but what julia's managed to do is she's managed to write a very um a very compelling story which is about two people who feel very real who aren't in the first flush of youth um who've been around the block a few times and have got a few um have got a few edges and um you know it isn't it isn't always easy getting older and you know people get lonely and you know it is hard to meet people but there's something about the summer of wishful thinking that makes you believe that you know even in you know your 40s it's it, you can fall in love again and i think when i read the book for the first time that's that's how it made me me it, it, how it made me feel it made me feel like i wanted to fall in love again 
and um, remembered how wonderful it was to meet somebody and feel that passion and that excitement. And um, Sam and Gemma have a few, uh, quite a few hurdles in the road, but you know, um, Julia is ever the romantic and, um, and it all comes around to a really wonderful resolution. And um, it's a beautiful, real, authentic, um, story that is perfect for these times. Um, it makes you feel good and um, I'm really proud to be Julia's publisher and to um, have the book out there with, um, you know, with Eve Edwards' name on it. Um, yeah. Although I still have to get used to all these names that you've got as well, Julia. So I, I would I like us all to raise a glass to the, to the mother of the book um, and to wish her well on her, on her journey. Thank you very much. She's well on it. She's well on it, quite honestly. So thank you very much, Julia. Congratulations to you and lovely to see everybody here. What, okay. a, what a wonderful thing to do. Thank you. So now, um, this is where you get to talk to people. I'm going to give you five questions, um, which I'm going to share with you. So try and remember them, but then I'll put them in the chat whilst when, when you're in your breakout rooms. Um, and I'll break you into groups of about nine and it's going to be a lottery who you end up with and see which group does best. That's, that's the plan. So um, let me just tell you what the questions are. So you might need to, I know, jot these down or whatever, or get lost and don't Google them, <laughs> right? No cheating. Okay, can everybody see? Let me, there we go. Here we go. So, um, first question is, who interrupts Jane Eyre's wedding? This is for the literary classics readers out there. Mr. Rochester, Mr. Mason, Mrs. Fairfax, or Mr. Rivers? Second question, who interrupts Charles's wedding in Four Weddings and a Funeral? Is it Henrietta? Is it Carrie? Is it David? Or is it Hamish? Third question. Who was the last unmarried King of England? Was it William II? Edward IV? Edward V? Or Edward VIII? Okay, this is, I was, my sister told me I was going too highbrow. So here we go. Which of these are married? Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn. Cara Delevingne and Ashley Benson. Now I'm hoping all you older, fo older folk know exactly who all those people are. And finally, this one you've got to look at quite carefully. I will put this on the chat for you to see. Which of these readings can't you have at a registry office wedding in England? Shakespeare's sonnet 116, let me not to the marriage of true minds, etc. 1 Corinthians 13, that's the one, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not love. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sonnet, if thou must love me. Or John Cooper Clarke's poem, I Want to Be Your Vacuum Cleaner. Okay. So, everybody, I am now going to break you up. So you're about to go into 10 rooms and meet some people. And I will put those questions on the chat for you to then work out which group is best. So off you go.
for everyone to get back. everyone's back okay so should i give you the answers yes okay so the first one let me go back into my presentation uh sorry i'm just working out how to here we go the first one i know there will be uh, lots of people there who can do this one i'm certainly hoping my sister-in-law who's a english teacher knows this one uh it's mr mason who is the plot spoiler um who's the brother of the so-called mad woman in the attic uh so that's that one and then the next one now did you remember this one so charles is getting married to henrietta carrie is the woman he loves Hamish is the man Carrie married, and David is his deaf brother who does the thing where he uses sign language to interrupt the wedding. So a brilliant little set piece there. So it's the answer for that one is David. Third one, um, this one, I'm being very strict. All of these kings were unmarried, but Edward VIII wasn't married while he was king because that was the whole point. He had to, uh, you know, give up the throne for the woman he loved. So the answer was Edward VIII. These ones, I'm told by my sister that it's Kim and Kanye who are married. Well, I, th I think I did know that. All the others are in committed relationships, but not yet married or, so we don't, we don't think they're married. And then this one, the final question was, which of these can't you have as a re registry office wedding? It's an odd fact that you can't have any religious readings as a civil ser service so you can have shakespeare you can have browning you can have poems about vacuum cleaners but you can't have the bible so um it's the one corinthians 13 that you're not allowed now i promised to finish at half past um so i'm going to now just say thank you all for coming uh it's been fabulous having you here um if you want to do, help me out uh, please now go and buy the book. It's uh, at the moment um, a Kindle download just for 99p, which you can find uh, on Amazon at that link or just type in the title to Amazon. Um, and it'd be really, really helpful so you can attract the attention of the Amazon algorithm if you went back and left a review. That'd be fabulous. I'd be very, very grateful indeed. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for coming. And uh, let me just go back to wave to you all. Where are you all? Let me find, I've lost you all. I'm gonna get rid of that. Julia, can I just ask, when will the book be available in paper? Oh, a, an actual book book. Actual books, I love actual books. <laughs> actual book books is July, but that's also, um, if you look on the Amazon site, it gives you a date for that as well. But of course it will be available if bookshops are open, yeah. uh, other bookshops there, but that will give you the actual date. It's something like July the 23rd. Um, so thank you so much for everybody for turning up. Oh, we've gone one minute over. So I'm gonna have to say thank you very much. Go and, um, Toast the Queen at nine o'clock. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and thank you so much for coming and looking for so splendid. And I, as I said, I will um, put up a, a very edited version of this um, just to sort of give the splendor of everyone who was here. So thank you very much and you're free to go. I release you back into the wild. <laughs> thank you for having us. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's Bye. Bye. Bye, Grace. Bye-bye. Lovely seeing you.